Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar. You might be like, wow, with the title like Massive App Store Drama, what are you talking about over here? Today's video is a bit uh, of an educational affair, but also one that stems from mobile gaming, alright? You might be wondering, how does the App Store have any form of drama in it? Well, ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax, because Exhibit A involves this little word game right heel called Wordle, alright? Now, Wordle is something you might have heard of, alright? Somebody on Facebook might have shared it, I don't know. But in general, it's a pretty simple little game, alright? For instance, all you really have to do is type in a word, for instance, like I type in voice, okay? Now, once you, once you enter this, you'll notice that it's given me gray letters, it's given me two yellow letters, and uh, generally, if you know the game, basically, as long as you see a green letter, you basically can figure out the word, okay? So I have to replace O and V somewhere else in this grid to figure out what the actual word is, okay? Now, for those of you following along, this game is not so different from the American game show Lingo, which is basically almost the exact same thing. In fact, I'm sure this is played around the world. If we look very closely, you can see that production companies as far as back as 1987 were working on this. This is a pretty old game. It's a pretty vintage game. Your great-grandmother might have heard of it. So by no accounts is this an original idea. But this is a small little app that, if you've noticed, has no ads on it, no monetization, no nothing. It's actually created by one guy named Josh Wardle, who basically sat down, made this game. It basically gives you one word a day, and people just come in, they do a word a day, they figure it out, they share it on the internet, and say, look how fast I figured it out. Now, this little application, while I told you has no monetization, is very popular amongst the mobile gaming crowd, okay, which is the greater, larger people who don't really game, they just like to play something in between bathroom sessions, okay? This is pretty much what it, what it is. So, you can imagine, all right, when something is so popular, and this went from, like, 60 people a day using it to, like, 2 million people a day logging on to play a little word game. When something is that popular, we enter into what is considered part two, the clone apps, or the rise of the clones, if you will. Now, clone apps are no shock, okay? When you have things like Flappy Bird, or really any mobile game, to understand how mobile game development works, if one game is super successful on the App Store, like case in point, again, Flappy Bird, there's gonna be 9 million Flappy Bird clones made within the hour, okay? That's pretty much how it goes. And it just gets flooded onto the App Store, it gets flooded onto the Play Store, it gets flooded onto every single mobile store out there, and people on their phones who are like, man, I wanna play this Flappy Bird people are talking about. They type in the word Flappy Flappy on their cell phone's app store, and they've got like 9 million results to pick from. Now, of course, somebody could just say, I'll download this one, I'll download... People download whatever, okay? Most people in this camp do not think of who the original creator is, or, you know, paying... or, or downloading the original app. If the game looks the same from the screenshots, I'm on trend, boys. I don't care. Now, the reason why this caused so much drama is one person decided to not only copy this little game, but turn it into a bit of a subscription service. So let's go look at it real quick. Now, this one developer by the name of uh, Zach, for instance, who we're just going to like, I'm just going to say for the record, I don't promote any form of harassment. I don't want anybody to like reach out to this individual because let me tell you, the problem is actually not people copying each other. It's the actual goddamn storefront. But Zach basically went up and said, I love Wordle so much, I decided to make my own Wordle app. Remember, there is no app for Wordle on the App Store. It's just purely a web game. With a twist, there's not just five letter words, but there are also four, six, and seven letter words too. What a twist, man. He just made... God, beautiful. What an amazing bit of game engineering right here. You can also play unlimited times if you're on the pro version. So using an App Store preview, like a Wayback Machine, because Apple actually removed this app for a clone policy, which makes sense. Wordle, the app, the word games everyone's playing. So you can imagine the SEO optimization. Use the same name, call it the app, you win in the first search result. Wordle is the hottest word game that everyone's talking about. And again, let's look at the subscription fees for it real quick. The actual cost for Wordle Pro is, I'm not going to joke, $29.99. Yes, these people are trying to convince actual, you know, generic Andes into paying 30 bucks a month, apparently, or just, I guess, a subscription or something, or I guess owning the Pro version, to play a simple little word game again. Goddamn, is the price gouging bad. People want to complain about, like, microtransactions and paid games? Whoo, join the world of free mobile gaming, and then you can see where the real butt plugs are stuck in. Now, if talking about how you were going to just create this application with just the worst types of monetization wasn't bad enough, 
Here he actually tried to just say, ah, look at how impressive it is, guys. We are down 12,000 downloads, rank number 28 word game, and the number fourth result for Wordle. We're going to the fucking moon. God, I hate that phrase so much. Are you worried about the trademark for Wordle? I remember hashtag export got some copycat. What trademark? Of course, an application like this wasn't trademarked because nobody sat down. Because at the end of the day, nobody wanted to monetize a little word game like this. It was just meant to be fun. It was just meant to be out there. Again, he's like, I'm literally giddy. That's 5.4k downloads in one hour. Are you going to dedicate some equity to the person who created the game mechanic? And Zach's like, bruh, even the guy who made the Wordle game on the store was, or, or, the, or the website wasn't the original. There's Lingo. God damn, huge shout out. Congratulations. God damn real twitch dmca style thank you so again you can imagine with this kind of attitude obviously we knew what this person was doing they took a application that every one of their grandma was playing right now this weekend turned it into an app and got a bunch of people possibly to download watch some ads and maybe a couple suckers to pay for the pro subscription it's a grift that's been running on the app store and the play store for as long as time memoriam okay now, again, I said earlier, while this is shitty in of itself, this is not, of course, the only big thing. Well, when I saw all this drama go out in the community, immediately in my head, I wondered, okay, why are we making this thing into one big deal where we're single, where we're isolating this one person? This has happened with almost every massive mobile game ever. 2048, you know, again... Flappy Bird, for instance, or really any form of runner that's present on the App Store, any top free game has been cloned hundreds, if not thousands of times. And really the culprit lies in Apple, okay? Because this is where things actually end up getting serious. The true costs, in my opinion, of some of these cloned applications. Now, Apple does not allow people to just clone apps, okay? You can't just clone somebody's application, flood the app store with it. You got to change it up a little bit, okay? You got to, like, change things around. Maybe the title, maybe a little bit of the UI. But to understand, this exists through every single tech company out there. Anytime a piece of user interface works really well, almost every other app copies it just fine. I mean, Tinder had the whole, like, swipe left, swipe right. Every dating app basically copied that. Just like every social media app copied things like Twitter, like Instagram, where they constantly scroll down to keep addicted to the social media platforms. Games are no exception in this list. Now, to understand, you might be wondering, okay, but people who are cloning this stuff, they're probably putting a lot of effort into these games as well, too. Which, in reality, is very questionable. For instance, there are services like Tapjet, for instance, that allow you to create high-quality applications to ensure you get the most from our technology will help you build and deploy your first project. And then you can create more yourself. So for instance, here they work on apps for podcasting, for news, for conferences. In reality, if you use services like this, there's a good chance that every single news app that these people have ever worked on looks incredibly similar to one another. In fact, the UI they provide, the coding that they do, is usually skeletal in nature. Basically, literally you provide them folders and files in a Dropbox folder to create the app. Basically, you provide them your pictures, your full, every single asset that they need. They then plug it in on the back end with Amazon Web Services and then put publish and push the app out there, okay? Now, again, this is just applications for things like news and conferences. There are tools like BuildBox, for instance, which make video game development simple. Create 3D and 2D video games without coding, free and easy to use. So again, if you look at their tool, it looks like some standard 3D game design thing, right? That's all it is. But generally, it's a tool that's designed to take a lot of the hard work out of game development. So people who just want to make a video game can jump in, quickly hobble it together, and publish it out to the various stores. And again, if you look at things like, for instance, pricing right here, you can see that even their newest software, you can get free $0 right now. You can export it to mobile and desktop. You can literally put it onto ad networks. So custom ad networks, for instance, right? Like if you pay them the $499 per year, you can literally get custom ad networks where like revenue goes to you. Revenue earned from the Apple App Store, from the Google App Store, ad box monetization. In fact, even the free tier is perfect for you. 
Again, I'm not here throwing any of these applications under the shade. Really what's happening over here is a lot of people who are in the market to grift will utilize tools like BuildBox, okay? And again, BuildBox provides a service to make things as easy as possible. Again, it's not really their fault that people use their services for unintended reasons. Tapjet, same thing. But these are just two services out of a sea of hundreds of others. So when these people jump on board, they'll look at a popular game like Flappy Bird, quickly code it together, or sorry, not need to code it, just randomly slap it together in these tools, export it, and all of a sudden, you have thousands of applications that are flooded to the store. Now, this is dangerous for a couple things, okay? Not only do you have the sea of copycats roaming around, but you potentially have situations where some of these applications can maliciously monetize you. Some of these applications could in fact contain some malware which goes unchecked on the app stores constantly. Maybe not the Apple app store as much, but the Google Play store has had several cases of malware sitting on it. But also you tend to have a lot of these people who just frankly want to be shady and just jump onto these SEO trends and gain a little bit of the money, a little grifty money in the process. It's, it's a truly shameless thing that's been going on for years and neither mobile department has ever really stepped in to stop it. So like I showed you earlier with Zach's application where he had Wordle Pro for 30 bucks, in no dimension is that going to be worth $30 a month, okay, at least from a logical perspective. But there are applications that have done this constantly, even on the Apple Store. And again, I'm really dogging on Apple because Apple is the only company right now where you cannot put in a third-party app store. And don't give me the shit where you can just, oh, Muda, you can use this one tool that allow you to install third-party IPAs for like seven days. No, 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 something official. If Apple had an official toggle in their settings where you could install third-party applications, that would be different. So far, the only official way the right way to get applications from Apple is to download them from their own app store. So this is one tool called Privacy Assistant String VPN. Anytime you see Privacy Assistant, red flags, okay? VPN service, another red flag. The fact that they misspelled the iPhone, right? Miscapitalized, third red flags. But of course, if you go down over here, you can see String VPN. All right, by the way, up here it's string, and then down here they, they put Sting VPN. By the way, this app is removed. Is a fully featured mobile connectivity and network signal test tool. Speed test includes download, upload, and latency. And again, <laughs> Look at look at these look at these like a uh, cute little um cute little cute little reviews. So here you've got random sock account. Wow, I can't believe how great it is. Better than all other protect applications. The most valuable aspect is String VPN does not slow down using speed like other similar applications. Easy and simple. Yeah, it doesn't sound fake at all. Oh, here's another five star one. All right, goddamn, a day after. Quick service. They're very fast and professional. I hope I will stay safe online using it for many years. I thank you for making my phone and personal business safe. Ah, here's another random user. This app makes everything become easier for me to access from my phone anywhere. You can protect your... Yeah, these are all paid fucking reviews. Garbage. But then if you look down, look at how much they're charging for one month. $30. A year, $90. Week, $9. This is like some serious, like, just price gouging shit going on. But to understand, this is how the grift works, okay? You create some random generic application that's going to jump to the top of the ratings, all right? In certain cases, it could be a game. In certain cases, it could be a VPN tool. And as long as you can get one or two suckers, okay, out of 100 to pay that subscription fee, all right, by basically clicking next a few times, falling for the iTunes app subscription process, that's... You won, okay? You won, all right? Simple as that, you won, okay? If you, you have, you have succeeded the game, okay? That's pretty much all that it is. It's funny in Zach's case, all right, when we go back to his little application, he also said a while back, I absolutely despise copycats. Shameless copying is so dumb. Take inspirations from other. What are they doing that? Why are they doing that? Why is this a good feature for users? How can we build on top of that? Shameless copy pasting ideas, features will get you nowhere. Now, when Zach says this, I'm a little, I'm questioning the whole situation right here. Let's go back to that privacy assistant application or even his own. When you see these in-app purchases from any store, a percentage of this money ends up going back to either Apple or Google or really Amazon or whoever the store owner for the application is. So when you have people who fall for these applications and in Sting VPN's case, this is one where this application allegedly also made close to like a million dollars, okay? Like it was something insane. There were that many people downloading it, that many people using it, and it made an 
absolute hefty amount of cash. So again, going to Zach's idea, if it gets you nowhere, clearly in his case, it kind of worked. He was trending on the app store and the money that he may have made on the application I wouldn't doubt that Apple makes a juicy cut of that, okay? Like they would make on any application that flows into their store. Now, of course, Apple has removed his application as well as many other Wordle applications, but that's only until they start getting mainstream attention on the internet. Honestly, there are so many clone applications that are still sitting on the App Store and the Google Store right now that uh, it'll it's, it's gonna boggle your mind. You have an anti-clone policy but yet there's still so many of these applications that exist. And when you go into the idea of malware, even beyond just, you know, the, the potential for like malicious monetization, when you have a bunch of children or like, you know, adults who are downloading app games, just simple games, okay? Simple shit like Flappy Bird or whatever. It is so easy sometimes from what it seems from how much malware gets busted, at least on the Google Play Store for this stuff to seep into these devices. Somebody could be playing a simple mobile game and wondering why their phone is getting so hot. It's probably because alongside that juicy little mobile game, somebody might have snuck in a little crypto miner on your device. We've seen actual Android malware where devices literally like sign people up to premium SMS services. So they were just siphoning little tiny cents from from like one person. Of course, when you do this in bulk, those tiny cents add up to hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. This is a real problem on these stores, okay? And while this drama started off from like a copyright trademark issue with mobile games that frankly are all copies really of one another, no disrespect to Wordle, all right? Clearly we've seen this in other older tools, but the real issue in this is how much money can be generated from this, you know, clone grift but also the potential dangers a lot of people are exposing themselves up to when downloading these like clone applications because you never know, all right, what you're either signing up to or you also never really know what it is that comes with that package. Sometimes nefarious things slip through. So I guess the real moral of the story is, is that when you're involving your mobile device, which by the way, contains some of the most personal stuff that people have, all right, like this is basically like more valuable than your wallet even. You got to start taking care and start paying vigilance into what you're actually downloading. Even mobile games like Wordle or whatever, or mobile games in general, or just clone applications or applications that let you do like really generic things that exist in the hundreds of thousands on the various stores that you're using. Make sure you download the ones that are probably the most original and the ones that have been the most vetted. All right. And even then stay goddamn vigilant. All right. Because this is a massive problem that's existed for years and I'm glad that it's starting to gain some level of attention in recent years, but I have friends who work in this business and they know just how bad things really are. And of course, who knows when things really get better. This was all supposed to get better back in 2017. We're currently in 2022 and it seems no one in the magical world of app ownership or app store ownership actually gives a fuck. So be careful in the world of downloading applications. Make sure you know what you're downloading. Be careful on what you're downloading. And you shouldn't run into any issues. That being said, sorry if this video was a little technical jargony or a little bit dry. I just frankly wanted to talk about it because it is a big deal to me. This is me, Muda, and I am.